Hey SEO fans, this is Mike from the SEO Pub and just want to make a quick video for you about how to, how to utilize Scrapebox for local SEO. For any of you that know me well or talk to me a lot, you know that I do a, a lot of local SEO for small business owners. Um, local SEO actually makes up a, a large part of my business these days. And one question I get asked a lot by people who want to get into local SEO um, or thinking about doing it or have been doing it for a while or, or what kind of tools do I like to use um, for local SEO and SEO in general and I have a, a couple favorite tools that I use pretty much every day but one that always makes the list and has for four or five years I, I've owned it now is Scrapebox. Now a lot of times when I tell SEOs that I, I use Scrapebox a lot for my local SEO their immediate reaction is, oh no, I don't, I don't want to do any spamming, or I don't want to spam any backlinks and do any blog comment spam out there for this client, because uh, you know they're a lot more worried about getting a site penalized or hurting the rankings, doing any permanent damage to the website for you know a, a real business, and it just shows that a lot of people really don't understand everything Scrapebox can do. So, uh, real quick though, what is Scrapebox? I'm not going to go into a big tutorial here about how to use Scrapebox and what you can do, all the things you can do with Scrapebox. Um, there's other videos out there you can find if that's what you're interested in. I, I've done a couple videos on some of the ways that I, I do use Scrapebox, but um, just a quick overview for any of you that are not familiar with Scrapebox. Uh, this is the interface when you start up Scrapebox. This is what you see. And I know a lot of people when they first start using Scrapebox, they see this and they're a little uh, underwhelmed, I guess would be the word. Um, they hear all these stories about how awesome Scrapebox is, and all these, you know, all these people rave about it. And then they see the interface, and it, you know, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles of uh, a lot of the other tools out there. Um, not, no fancy graphics, uh, but sometimes simpler is is better. Now, at a glance, it looks like a simple little tool, but it really has a wealth of power hidden in this basic looking interface if you know how to use it. Most people are familiar with its blog commenting features and that's what it's best known for but in my opinion that's its least useful feature. Um, really has a lot more power in scraping data as the name would suggest um, from Google based on on parameters that you give it to look to look at and these parameters are commonly known as footprints. By using these footprints, you can narrow or broaden your search to whatever levels you're looking for for your particular project. After you complete your scraping, you're going to be given a list of URLs, and you can further refine that data, those URLs, by a host of different factors that Scrapebox lets you use. Um, you can tell it to check the page rank of every single URL, and then if you want you can sort by page rank and get rid of all the low PR pages. You can check the number of outgoing backlinks on the pages. Um, if you're looking for pages to build backlinks off of, you see a bunch of URLs that you scrape that have 300, 400, 500 outgoing backlinks already. Well those are a waste of time so you can just get rid of those. Um, you can see whether or not the site allows comments. There's a host of all kinds of factors that you can use to to really narrow down these results then. We're not really going to use any of that stuff for this project and for this example, but um, just letting you know some of the things you can do with Scrapebox. And all the data that you can pull from Google, the, the only real limit is your imagination with your footprints. I've seen some people get really creative with footprints they've come up with to use, and uh, it's really allowed them to pull some, some massive amounts of data from Google. Now, where does Scrapebox fit into local SEO? Well, it, when it comes to local SEO, if you've been doing local SEO, you know, or you should know, that the, probably the most important ranking factor, or at least one of the most important ranking factors, of course, backlinks are important, just like any other project, but when it comes to local SEO, it's citations. It's all about gathering citations for, for the uh, website to rank in the local market. Now, what is a citation if you're not familiar with it? Well, a citation consists of a NAP. It's an abbreviation for a name, which is the name of the business, address, which is the physical location of the mailing address of the business, 
and a phone number. And when these three things appear together, that makes up a NAP, which makes up a citation. And what it is, it's, it's a signal to search engine that this website should rank for local search terms relevant to its line of work. If you've been doing local SEO for any length of time, you should be familiar with the most common places to get a NAP. This is, and these are just some examples in no particular order, but there's Merchant Circle, Facebook, Yelp, Foursquare, Brown Book, Local Ease, uh, iBegin, Yellow Pages. There, there's a ton of these directories out there. I think I, right now I have a list of about 60 that I use for every single one of my clients. Now, when you're doing local SEO in your own community, you're probably familiar with a lot of great sources to get NAPs that maybe aren't, they're not the national known Yelp and those, those kind of directories, but a lot of times there's local community pages that have a lot of authority and allow you to get a NAP. Um, I have a lot of clients, I live in York, Pennsylvania, I'm on the East Coast, I, I know areas in, in York that I can get a NAP, but a lot of my clients are on the West Coast, and I don't know their town as well. I don't know um, everywhere, you know, in their community. But that's okay, because I can use Scrapebox to find these local community sources. And the way you do it is just using a simple, simple footprint. Okay, so let's say we just picked up a new client, and uh, let's say it's a dental practice. Um, I'm going to use a town near me that I'm aware of is Gettysburg. Is it the same town where the famous Civil War battle happened? So what I want to do, I'm going to go into Google, and I'm going to search for Dennis in Gettysburg, PA. And take a look at the search results. And what I would normally do, I would grab between five and eight local results I'm looking for. Um, I would grab pretty much all the ones that are in the, the Google Places listings. I'm just going to use one for the example for this video, but I would be using all of these. So I want to go visit their website, and what I'm looking for is the address of the business right here. Oh, that's a bit annoying. I hate those things. Um, I'm looking for the address of the business, which is right here at the top in this case. So I'm going to copy that address. And then I'm going to go over to my VPS where I have Scrapebox installed. And I want to use a custom footprint. And we're going to put the footprint in here. So I'm going to paste that address and get rid of that funny symbol that they had. Now, one little tip for you that I do is around the street address, I put quotes. The reason I do that, the address in this case is 1650 Biglerville Road. If you do the search without the quotes, Google's going to possibly return results that have just the word Biglerville in it, just the number 1650, just the word road, just the word Gettysburg, all these results that I'm not looking for. So I put quotes around the street address. On top of that, what I would normally do is I'd copy and paste it a couple times and add in any abbreviations. So in this case, it's 1650 Biglerville Road. I'd put 1650 Biglerville RD or RD period. Any kind of abbreviations. If the address was a street, I'd put ST. If it's an avenue, I'd put AVE, even AV. Um, if there's suites, in, a suite involved in the address, then I'd put an abbreviation for suite, STE, period. Any Anything like that. Now, if you talk to anyone that does local SEO, they'll tell you that you want to make your citations, the, the address and your citation, match exactly the way the address appears on your Google Places listing. And I do try and do that. Um, however, I think Google's smart enough to realize that AVE means avenue. I don't think you get nicked for that or you lose the citation, but I'm not taking any chances, so I try and create mine all the same. Not everyone does, though, so I want to make sure I pick up any citation that I can, so I put in all those abbreviations. One other variation we're going to add at the end of this footprint. Most of you are familiar with the site command in Google, where you can... Uh, type in site colon, put in the URL. A lot of people use this to check if a page is indexed in the search engine yet. Well, we're going to use it a little differently for this. So I'm going to copy the URL of this website, and we'll go back to Scrapebox. And instead of the site command, 
I'm going to put a minus sign and then the site command. And then I'm going to put the URL. Now what that minus sign does is it's going to remove every result that comes from this domain. So when we perform the search, GettysburgFamilyDentist.com, which is the website of the business, they probably have their address on every page of their website. And depending how big of a website it is, different companies, there might be 100 pages, 200, 300. We don't want any of those results. We don't, we don't need those. So I want to put a minus sign and then the site command, and that's going to eliminate all those results from our search. Then normally I'd be using proxies when I use Scrapebox, but I don't want to expose any of my private proxies on a public video like this, so I'm not going to use proxies for this, but normally I would definitely would. And just going to hit the Start Harvesting button. And it's going to go ahead and pull our results. Now I have Scrapebox set that it automatically removes duplicate URLs. So it's scraped a lot more than this, but what I'm left with is 47 URLs. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to export these. Go to Export, Copy All URLs to Clipboard. And then I like to use a uh, just a simple Excel spreadsheet. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to paste all of those results. into the spreadsheet. I like to use the spreadsheet because I'll, I can put notes now. Um, you know, if, if one of these URLs doesn't work for getting a citation, I can notate that. If I do enter something in and it's one of those type of sites that it takes a couple days for them to review your entry or approve it, I can make notes of that and go back and check, and check my progress. Um, but what I'll do is I'll go through all of these and find these are places where that business had citations. So I'll go through each of these URLs one by one and see if I can duplicate their citation for my client. Now some of these are the normal popular ones that we talked about before, like Yelp is on here. I don't need that. Yellow Pages, Super Pages, Manta. Those are all the popular ones, but there's a lot of other ones on here that I wouldn't have found without this search. Now this is only 47. Normally, as I said, I would take five to eight businesses, do the same search, um, with each of them all at once and probably end up with a lot more uh, places where you can get citations but this is a great start and what I do for my client is I duplicate as many of the co competitor citations as I can plus to add in the ones that I normally do for my clients and it's one of the ways that I work to outrank the competition so I hope you like the video and let me know if you have any questions